Getting some feedback there. Welcome once again to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, a homebrewed D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, I am the GM and world builder and your host. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, uh, here to uh, provide the thrilling backdrop to the tales of Omatia. I have with me my collection of players, starting on my left with Silas. All right. My name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, Warlock Cultist. Hi, my name is Marie. I'm playing Annie, uh, who is a human rogue, and I'm sideways because my camera died. <laughs> and I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. And uh, Mark, was there supposed to be the opening music because I did not hear it? Like, I don't know if it was supposed to be running. Uh, it did run. I heard it anyway, so I don't know if it did okay. transmit. Uh, technical issues are still, unfortunately, plaguing us in minor and uh, annoying ways, but we're still uh, trying to move forward. I have my secondary audio recording going this time. Uh, welcome once again. This is, as I said, a homebrew campaign. Uh, we are in the midst of discovery, I think, here. And uh, while I usually give the uh, the summary of what happened before... I don't know why, for whatever reason, distraction with some other uh, stories that I'm writing at the moment uh, led me to draw a bit of a blank for the recap this time. I have a little bit here, but I thought I'd give it an, op an opportunity for my players to recall what happened last time. Who would like to jump in with uh, some of what happened last time? <laughs> Do it's, it's like that moment where you show up to class and it's like, oh, by the way, there's a test. Mm. It's fair. Yeah, I did I, try to give a little bit of warning, I, but but yeah, if we'd known early enough, I could have done a synopsis. But uh... yeah, sorry about that. Well, it doesn't have to be detailed. Um, I'll go through my notes. Through well, my notes. I know we came back from the lighthouse. We had figured out that there were likely two spots where there might be a disruptive device. One was in the bay. One was near the marketplace. Um, and we chased down this shadowy yeah. clad creature which turned but, out to be the uh i forget her name but i have it baron Sable Sable. yeah baron yep. harquin's daughter and after uh, a graceless dive roll and dive tackle that medrick totally botched <laughs> we got her eventually and it turns out she needs our help because the baroness is being sketchy and the baron is not who he's uh, he's not himself and silas found a potato Left it there. Important potato. <laughs> Plot potato. And he spoke to uh, Captain Verinell and inquired about going into the sewers. And we will be given a guide. I forget her name. But she will meet Marga. us tomorrow, which is today. So yes, We're, we're uh, not nearly as dramatic with our recaps, are we? <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, it, it's. I wasn't sure if I was missing some other things, too, but that was... Uh, that was a pretty good description of, of the, yeah. the salient points. Well, also, uh, we found out that uh, the young lady, Sable Harquin, uh, has been working with the diamond. Uh, yeah. And someone locked us in after she left. Yes, that's important. Which we're not sure of who it was, but probably Somebody the knows we were in touch with Sable. Um, which is probably not good. Uh, yes, we're going to be going... Uh, we're going to be meeting up with a woman named Marta, who is one of the people who works in this in the uh, storm tunnels, uh, storm drains. Uh, in the morning, uh, I think if anything else happened. Uh, the last thing that happened with Silas was he walked into the water and started meditating on Mother Hydra, uh, somewhere off uh, the coast of where his village is. Okay, in kind of the shadow also of Cape Raven, where the Baron's uh, homestead is, um, but on the other side of Cape Raven, which means you're not worried about the uh, raging storm, which continues to batter Ilthwater. But yes, let's begin there then, as Silas, uh, probably as the sun has gone down, or are you going to try to do this before the sun has gone down? Well, he probably got back in the evening. So it's probably dark. Okay. So the stars are starting to uh, to peer out through the sky, and a little bit of wispy clouds. You can you've noticed that um, 
while the storm itself has not affected you, it has an effect in the region um, where the clouds are a little bit faster moving as they approach the uh, the town as well. Um, it hasn't, again, as I said, negatively affected vastly this area other than kind of making it a little bit more confusing when they do their weather predictions in the morning. Is it going to rain today? Well, it looks like it's going to rain over there. And that looks like it's going to get caught up in the swell of this crazy twisting storm. But for this evening, only a few wispy clouds block the stars. They're out in bright. Um, I'll say probably Marina is out bright tonight. Mary is still below the horizon as you set off into the water. Do you make it a secret event or do you do it in the first this place right beside the, the boats that uh, you dock there or, or what? No, he would just, uh, after supper, he goes off to the, the docks and walks down into the water. Okay. There's a few of the uh, the family which observe this. Um, in particular, um, oh man, I've just forgotten his name. Um, not Odiga, but the other elder. Um, <laughs> uh, Athenos. Athenos, thank you. Athenos sees this and watches you go out, but makes no comment. Um, almost seeming unsurprised by this, um, while it is well known that uh, members of the family are really accomplished swimmers for the most part, um, he does not seem to be surprised that you take no precautions as you simply walk right into the water. Describe how you approach this. Are you going out and walking so that your head is over? Are you going just so the water say up to your chest and sitting down? What's your approach? No, he goes out till it's like 20 feet deep, 30 feet deep. He's way underwater. Okay. Um, at this point, it starts to get quite cold as the as you get a little bit deeper in, farther away from the shore. You can feel as uh, as almost an inherent ability the small microcurrents underneath the water. Most people would look at vast bodies of water, and when they're not with not having massive tides, would think that they are still and unmoving but you know better and as you get further out you can feel those little turns and twists the little um, undercurrent which flows around your your ankles and, and around your feet turning up a little bit of the silt on the, on the bottom um, as opposed to the the sort of uh, steadier mid current which uh, seems to move just ever so slightly parallel to the uh, shoreline you see a few fish, curious at first, but not curious enough to get too close. And as you continue to move, they scurry away, but seem to still stay within about 40 feet, observing this strange, um, uh, strange invader in their environment. You find yourself 20 feet under the water. Now, Mar uh, Marina, it's nothing more than the hint of light far above. It's very, very dark, and your eyes adjust slowly. Uh, or actually, sorry, quickly, um, to this new environment. What do you do? Well, he finds a nice flat area to sit down in and just kind of sits down in like a meditative type position with the staff of the harbinger uh, held out on his hands. And forgetting how I described it last time. Um, he's basically thinking about what he has done in the service of the mother and uh, what the clan has done. And he's wondering, what is he supposed to do? Uh, what does she want from him? Uh, what's his purpose? Okay. The cold water moves in and out easily through your lungs. It still is a bit chilly. It sends a, a shiver up your spine. Uh, now these undercurrents flow ever around you as you're lower in the water. You seem to swirl in eddies, uh, causing the, the silt to twist in turn, almost as though there are small patterns being drawn on the surface in front of you. As you sit and relax, um, you feel those currents wrap around you now seemingly somehow steady. Not a current that flows around and through you, but a current that seems to surround you. Ever closer, ever tighter, feeling at first like a hug and then like tight clothing, binding you 
and holding you firm. You feel the presence of the mother. You feel okay. You feel as though you've caught her attention. If you could articulate uh -huh. specific questions or thoughts. What is my purpose as your harbinger? You see in front of you as the the water churns and twists. A small hill of sand that's not far away slowly starts to shake a little bit as the force of the water presses onto it. Um, you see the small stones and shells and even little plants on top that are wavering in this current, which you can feel connected to as though the current that flows around you is, is directed out towards that uh, on this top of this hill of sand. Smaller uh, shells are swept up around the base of this, uh, slowly rolling up and over and overtaking the peak. Piling into a small pile of stones that glimmer. I don't understand, Mother. What do you want me to do? Do I follow Odega? Do I lead the clan in my own direction? What do you want from me? Hmm. There is further motion as you see small crabs skittering up the side of this hill. There are three large crabs among this group of about a dozen, most of them tiny, kind of aimless, wandering around. And the three larger crabs are scooping up some of the smaller ones and putting them, moving them further up this hill. Two of the larger crabs seem to uh, keep pulling the little ones toward them. And the third crab, not quite as large as the other two, um, is also struggling over these smaller crabs. The larger two crabs push and pull at the smaller of the large crabs until all three are locked with claws in a push and pull. Suddenly the smaller one lances out with one of its claws, striking one of the other ones on, for lack of a better term, the head. That one backs off. The other one, without being struck, stands back but still stands proud. The smallest of the three takes the top of the hill, raises its claws upward, holding a small shiny piece of pearl that seems to turn and twist and catch that small bit of light coming from Marina and glow. So I should lead. But what do you want me to do? How do I best serve you? Do I... Am I supposed to conquer in your name? Are we supposed to... But what do you want from us? The smaller crabs start to turn and twist around this hill, pulling out small stones and tossing them behind them, uh, emptying it of anything that was marring the surface. As they turn and, and move... The three larger crabs start to turn around the top of the space as well, each of them kind of facing each other. The one with the the uh, the shiny uh, bit held up high, and they seem to be walking around it in tandem. Uh, as they do, the light coming from 
the moon above reflected off this shell, seems to inscribe a pattern on the sand over top. Suddenly, emerging from within that pattern uh, is a um, snake, a sea snake, that erupts out of the, the surface of the ground, flows upward, and rises to float and spin in circles above the three of them. It is enormous compared to these tiny little crabs. Is that you? Do you want us to bring you into this world to take the place of whatever it was that has gone? I know there are many who, who want that. Is that what you want? The sea serpent swims over towards you, hovers for a moment right in front of your face, its eyes unblinking, staring into yours, its head tilting from side to side, and it swims around you, following that same eddy of current that you can feel, turning and flowing and twisting around your body. It feels... Friendly isn't quite the right word. It feels familiar, but also it feels supportive. So you want a place here. I will, I will do my best, Mother. And as it rolls around you and kind of tucks itself in under your neck and you feel it kind of wrap around your head in ever tighter coils, this you might interpret as support, but also a warning. Never forgetting who has the power here, never forgetting who has the desires and who, in an instant, as the snake recoils away from you, removes that power. And even the small amount of warmth that it had as it got close to your skin is removed and you feel chilled. Yes, mother. It then swims down and opening its mouth wide, picks off one of the two larger crabs tossing it back and swallowing it whole. I think I understand, Mother. And he'll start to get up. Okay. As you watch, another of the crabs is, is picked up, the rest disperse, seemingly now under their own frightened control scurrying away to hide. Okay, Silas will uh, head back home, dry off, and think. All right. Oh, also, um, I meant to mention this, but he will ask around town for a few things he might borrow, like a sledgehammer and a shovel and uh, maybe some a bit more rope and possibly a crowbar if they've got one we might need to uh, uh all of those tools are easy to find in the uh in the marsh uh village those are all tools that they would have on hand we do, yeah you know, the, the family takes care of its own including its own ships and for the most part unless the only thing it's missing really is is uh, uh a metal worker which gives them some some uh Reliance upon the town. It's probably how your parents met to begin with. Yeah. Or sorry, your That's how, right, how, our, how you and yeah. your wife met, uh, Molly. Yeah, him and Molly. Um, so yeah, he finishes the preparations for the morning and uh, then goes to sleep. All right. Slightly troubled. Is there anything that I should... Uh, hear from Annie or Medrick before I say night passes 
Nope, no. I just did a few sendings last session. Okay. And then it's going to be just st staring into the fire, connecting with Ignis, and going to bed. I think Annie was reviewing her notes, as I recall. Yeah. Putting things in order. All right, then. Night passes. Now, you were to meet uh, Marda. She was actually to come to the Three Bells, but it was going to be really early in the morning. You wanted yep. to catch the earliest part you could when the tide was still out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Med or no, uh, Silas would be getting up really early and then uh, riding Blondie into town. The sun would barely even have been above the horizon at that point. It's like going to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. For, um, any, for those in town, today the, the winds are the strongest component. There's only a little bit of spitting of here and there of water, but the wind is very, very strong, and the clouds still are thick. Um, a ring of fog seems to settle in on the area as well, weirdly not dispersed by the winds, almost weird, somehow reinforced by it. As you pass through the ring of the storm, Silas, your horse uh, bucks a little bit. It's a rather unpleasant sensation to step through this this uh, this ring of, of storm. Well, it's, uh, it's okay, Blondie. It's okay. Annie and Medrick, you're up at a time when the the halls of the three bells are actually busy because this is the time when the fishermen are also getting their early, uh, their early meals, getting prepared to go out to sea. Low tide would be a great time for them to actually be able to launch their boats, uh, and, uh, be able to go further out on the dock before having to, uh, launch. So it's a full Patrick room downstairs. Thinking, like, uh, buffet lineups, but he's <laughs> keeping that to himself. Uh, not so much a well, not not so much buffet, but uh, it's uh, there's basically four things on the menu because they prepare them in bulk so that they have enough to cover everyone. So not really the order off the menu type thing this morning. Um, but Sandy is is happy to see you, and and the meals are fresh and uh, warm and a little spicy this morning. Good. Spicy is the food of Ignis. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Everybody else takes a D4 fire damage. You're just laughing as the flames roll at your nose. You go outside and meet Silas? Yeah. Yeah, after after breakfast and everything, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Silas will go there and have breakfast. Okay. Um, you have a, a pleasant meal. Did you discuss anything over the meal? You don't have to. I just want to give you opportunities. All right, Silas will let them know that he's grabbed some tools from home in case we need to smash down a door or shovel something out of the way. Yeah, that's a good idea. Although Annie already has a crowbar, but you can't go wrong with two. I'm also good at mm -hmm. smashing. Yeah. Uh, Annie doesn't have much she would say. She'd, she'd chat about the, the plan. Okay. So is this uh, Marta person going to be capable if we get into trouble down there? Probably not. I don't know. Uh, well, you're hoping. Any, you have the keys? Uh, Marta's just our guide, or does she have the keys as well? I mean, she works down there, so I guess she has a key. Mm. Uh, but... The captain gave me his keys. Okay. So. Yeah, the part of the problem was it's just a maze down there, so um, Marta's to be your guide. And presumably, as you said, Marta has her own keys. I couldn't remember whether or not uh, you had actually gotten keys from the captain or not. But it would yes. be... It would be two keys, I think, that would be on that ring. It's not very complicated. One and a big one. Yeah, one for the external doors and one for the internal doors. Well, as you wait, uh, the crowd grows a little thinner. 
There's no sign of Ma of Marta inside. Do you think she's waiting outside? I'd peek out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we're gonna take a look outside. Take a look out the window, and you see that there is indeed someone standing outside of the uh, of the three bells. As you watch, you notice that uh, people who come out uh, sort of glance in their direction and pointedly step a little bit further away. That, <laughs> perhaps, is Marta. It appears that Marta is a dwarf. Uh, you can tell from the stature, but not much from the actual look uh, themselves. Uh, appears to be dressed in a uh, long, uh, brown, coarse robe, um, bound at the uh, stomach with a, a heavy, uh, leather, uh, heavy uh, rope belt. Uh, a small a bag across your back it seems to have an odd uh, shape. It's not smooth, um, as if it seems to have something within. Her hair is thin and, uh, and uh, looks oily. It has a strange green tinge to the edges of it as well. She has no beard. As you know that some dwar some dwarves and some of the women don't have beards. In her case, she does not, although there is a sort of wisp of hair that seems to hang around her uh, her chin. It, too, has little flecks of green, apparently. Her uh, broad face is uh, weathered and old. She has a very prominent large nose, which she kind of snuffs at periodically, uh, kind of doing that uh, that thing of putting your finger up to one nostril and blowing really, really hard and then doing it to the other one and then wiping her hand off on the uh, edge of her robe. Um, and seems to be there kind of a little impatient, a little stooped as well. You notice that while she is dwarf-shaped and dwarf-sized, um, her back also seems to be a little curved, probably from age. Face has got some, some wrinkles in it, a little bit of dirt in those wrinkles as well. Doesn't seem to be bothered at all by the little bit of water that's blowing around. The weight of the wind, while strong, doesn't seem to move her hair all that much either, which has this stringy appearance. You presume that's Marta. I'll go out. Well, let's go greet her. Grab my cloak. Okay. I'll go ask her if she needs breakfast first or if she's ready to go. Okay. As you come closer and within about 10 feet, you have a feeling you're kind of aware by a lot of the people as they step out have taken a step in the other direction. The wind is not being kind to you, blowing something in your direction which smells... Uh, how do you put it? It smells like weak old fish. It smells yeah. like dirt that, and awesome. soil that's been... Uh, that's been tramped on by horses who've had way too much hay. It smells like um, leftover breakfast you forgot to take out a few days ago. Like sour milk. Like like a lot of rough smells. She doesn't hey, Marta. Uh, 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 hey, how are you doing? And she smiles warmly. I try to see. not be awkward. You can see that she's missing a few teeth, and she kind of uh, smiles uh, with a, a little a little tilt to her face, as though it's not quite straight. Hello, hello, hello. You must be the one that that pretty Verendel told me about. I am Marda Pit Digger. I'm to be your guide in the places where no one seems to ever want to go. Yeah, well, something causing the storm might be hidden in those places because nobody wants to go there. Interesting. Sounds terribly dangerous. Sounds exciting. Not much exciting or dangerous happens down below. At least... Well, that's good to hear. Not recently. Although there are some dark places that are best not to trod if you're not being careful or carry something sharp and pointy. Well, we got that covered. And I'll Are you smack sharp my hand or hammer. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, I'm blunt, I guess, but <laughs> I got daggers back there and an arrow. I've got an arrow. 
I have something I can <laughs> hit things with that'll hurt them if they attack us. Oh, good, good. Well, let's hope and it fire. doesn't come to that. I've told you my name, and the captain told me something of your names. Uh, you must be Medric, then. Yes? Yep. He's pointing at Medric. She's pointing at Medric. And, ah, Verandel's words were not so flowery after all. You must be Annie. I nod. I was clicking the wrong mouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the danger of having more than one machine. I know this one well. Um, and then she kind of sidelong looks at Silas. I know who you are. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised that someone of your family hasn't come to seek me out earlier. I'll look at Silas, like, wondering you know, what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Silas looks back and says, I don't know. Uh, my, my clan tends to stay in their own abode. Hmm. They tends to like the places that are dark and damp, from what I've heard. Or wild and wet. Hmm. Some of that as well. Follow me, follow me then. And she starts to walk across the street. She walks with a little bit of a limp and a little bit slowly. Um, it's, uh, it, 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 it seems mostly of age, not of particular infirmity. Um, the, uh, the sack across her back seems to jingle a little bit. The sound of metal on metal, for the most part. So, the Verandel wasn't so specific as to say what you were looking for. Are you telling me something of the storm? Yeah, we're not quite sure what we're looking for either. Hmm, that makes it harder. There's a lot of places down there, you know. Yeah, but uh, if you go down there often, we figured if there was anything different, you would know what it is. Oh, well. And also, we, we're not going to get lost with you, with us. You shouldn't likely get lost, but I haven't scoured the entirety of the underground for some time. It takes so long, you know. It's bigger than most people realize. Stretches as wide and far as the town, all the way down to the edge of the bay itself. Some parts aren't very accessible, especially when the tides get higher. Yeah, well, hopefully we're going to be in and out of there before the tides are up. I should hope so. And she kind of turns and, and points to you. But if that's not true, there are places that you can say stay, stay safely. It's happened to more than one crew. And we've made sure over time to have little pockets where one can hide out. Yeah, that's well designed. Mm -hmm. Pride of the family. Several generations back now. I'm the last pit caller to be here, a pit digger to be here. I never get her name right. <laughs> and actually, I meant to put it as pit maker, but pit digger works just fine. Close enough. Close enough. Um, she leads you over to, um, well, actually, she asks you, is there a particular place that you'd like to search first? It is a very large place, and we would never cover even a quarter of it before the tide came in. Hey, Silas, did you have the map, or did Annie have the map? Mm -hmm. I, I would have given it back. Yeah, I have the, the tracings that we did. Uh, I just tell it's somewhere off of the market uh, area, possibly... Uh, well, I point out the direction anyways. Okay. Uh, that was off to one side. It's in that circle somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, there's a couple of different places down there. Oh, I can show you the well. <laughs> that would be interesting, at least. Well, follow me then. And uh, in well, her slow follow way... you. In her slow way, she, follow, she uh, leads you uh, sort of around some of the buildings that you've been before and to a certain degree there's sort of alleyways that are there but 
you've never seen anybody walk down these alleyways. There, there's not really much that you think to, to go see until kind of leading into a, in a, a back area where a small, squat stone building sits. The stone building has a door on the front, um, which has uh, grates across the bottom. Uh, and she produces a key, which unlocks this door. Uh, it's actually, sorry, it would be a double door at this point. Um, there are many such entrances around, but this one probably leads closer to where you want to be. Does she have the, does she wear the key around her neck or does she have it in a pocket or? Produces it from somewhere inside her robe. Okay. Uh, it does have a chain on it though. Uh, and she, uh, you would think from the way she's moved so far that she would have to fuss with the lock, but it seems like the most natural motion for her is if she's done this hundreds or thousands of times. The door creaks open. It's a heavy uh, cast iron uh, uh, and uh, cast iron and, and wood for the most part. Um, you can see that it's kind of a cast iron uh, frame and and, um, and skeleton that's been filled in with wood. Again, leaving the open grating in the bottom, presumably, as you can see happening right now, for water to drain inward. She opens it up and uh, beckons you to follow. The stairs are wide and solid stone. Although weathered and aged, you can see the trickle of water uh, flowing down the stones. and There is a bit of dirt and, and mud which is accumulated upon them. She kind of tisks at them. I must tell some of the crew to start cleaning more often with all the storm. So many of the drains are getting clogged. And she leads you down. Ideal. Well, it's better than having it not used at all, I suppose. And I will find my window. There it is. I found my window. And she leads you down some stairs, and we will go to a map as I switch Yay. over to that map. It's dark down here. It is very dark down here. And where did she go? Oh, yeah. I don't have her on the same layer. She vanishes from sight accidentally, but only for a second. Uh, oops, did I get the right one? Uh, just one second. We need like interlude music. It doesn't really help me to, to, to mute my mic when it can be heard from the other room. Um, all right, let's see if I can get that going to the right layer now. There we go. There's Marta. The order isn't particularly chosen here. It's just kind of an example of, of where you came down the stairs. The stairs kind of spiral. Um, I couldn't, I didn't have the right ones that spiraled in the proper direction, so they look like they're spiraling upside down. <laughs> um, with this map, um, I'm going to be revealing areas as you get through them. Uh, I don't have it as an automatic reveal. I don't have as as uh, any sort of uh, light barriers. So you'll see sort of little trim and stuff which is uh, gone awry. And if I have forgotten to reveal an area that you've come into, uh, let me know. Um, Will do. The uh, the light there is actually coming from Annie. I think you had your you had uh, the dagger out before. Yeah. Uh, if there there are lights, then it wouldn't be there. Yeah. There's no particular light since she doesn't carry a lan lantern. But you can see from the bottom of the stairs, there's kind of an opening, and there's a, a, a heavy-looking uh, wardrobe off to the right-hand side. Um, and she points to it. And, and If you have something you'd rather not get messy or dirty, you can put it in there. It's a sturdy place. It's a safe place. It's waterproof even. Even muckproof, if you can believe it. 
Um, yeah, Silas doesn't have anything to put in there. Uh, Silas will light up the tip of the uh, staff. Okay. For right. <laughs> she admires the staff. That's very pretty. Looks very old and new. That is it. Like I suppose I could put my cloak in there, but it's already pretty uh, battered and, and disgusting since that time in a uh, Doctor Marigold's workshop. I put my cloak in there. Okay. She uses another key to unlock it, uh, and to your trained ears, Annie, the, the lock inside is very sturdy and more complicated than it looks than just a wardrobe. Um, it seems to make several noises as she turns the key through. Uh, and kind of, you even notice a little bit that the t key turns, then turns again, and then, as if she's kind of going to different times uh, as the key is, key is turning. Um, inside, there's there's uh, there's not much, and Marta doesn't add anything to the inside. Um, it looks like there's a, a couple of, of cloaks. There's some some nicer shoes um, that someone must have turned and changed out of sitting inside. Um, before no, you kind of... hmm? I'm probably going to keep my cloak on. It's already dirty enough. <laughs> it's a very thanks. nice cloak. But we always oh, offer for the few people who come down here who aren't already um, accustomed to this uh, place. We offer it. Silas will run his hand over uh, Medrick's cloak and clean it. We have him. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll keep my cloak on. As you wish. I'm not sure what magic you're using, but it may not be enough. And certainly won't matter in a few minutes, I think. Nope. But it will be helpful once we're gone or once we leave. As you wish. She closes up the the uh the uh, cabinet once more. Um and again Annie you know cabinet. Sorry? On the map, where's the the cabinet there? It is right beside you. That's it, right there. Yeah, it's like the green and brown uh, thing. Mm -hmm. I think it it probably was pure copper at one point, um, but it's very tarnished green at this point. Ah. Uh. And there is a bit of light coming through. So on the opposite part of the stairs, um, where Marta is standing on the map right now. And I got to remember to point at the right map. You thought it was bad with two mice. Try like three screens, uh, all of them showing the map at the same time. Uh, uh, where Marta is standing is actually in front of two doors, but these ones are just the skeletons of metal. There's no no wood in them whatsoever, and you can see some some uh, some weak light uh, filling out, uh, flowing in from a lantern, presumably or or a light just just outside of where you are. Um, she fiddles with uh, a key again, or rather pulls out a key and, and, uh, and unlocks uh, these gates. These are double gates, um, so each one is nearly five feet wide, so the entire entrance is ten feet, uh, allowing uh, you know, potentially to move quite something quite large through here as well. Down here, it's easy to get lost, and there's no real way to determine direction at all. But there are a few things you should keep an eye out for. These lamps, for example, each of them permanent, burning, no flame, old magic, very well used. When you see one, then a door should be nearby. Where that door leads, I can't tell you. Some are the small rooms, as I said, which are used as hideaways. There's a few storage uh, places for tools and things down here, that sort of thing. The light should guide you. As for the walk itself, the tide is low, so the water is also low. Don't be too afraid of its rather peculiar glow. You get used to that after a while. The green is caused by some delightful little algae that tends to grow in here most of the year. I find it a most pleasant green, although the smell is not to everyone's liking. And as she mentions the smell, you realize that it's not just her that you're uh, getting the scent and whiff of, but in fact, a, a heady scent, almost 
almost uh, uh, humid uh, flowing in. Uh, and through that doorway, you can see the sort of uh, flow of the water uh, a few feet below. She steps out, and I just grabbed the wrong screen. <laughs> she tips outward, and I need to... There we go. Well, I'm sure the smell's only temporary. Oh, no. The smell will be here forever. It's a good sign. I mean, for we're... us smelling it right now. Oh, well. I suppose if you go and try to forget it, you can. When she steps out, and as you as you move out, and you can move yourselves as you as you wish, um, there is a about a ten foot chasm um, that uh, crisscrosses in front of you. In this particular place, an old wooden bridge itself, kind of a little slick and kind of a little greenish from uh, algae and moss that have grown onto it, uh, extends across the way. Um, can I make sure I get my my uh, revelations here so I can get my... There we go. Uh, it extends off in both directions. And you can see just down the, the, the way from you uh, yet another of those lamps and in fact a doorway set into the wall and she starts walking uh, heading towards I'm just going to for convenience sake use the terms mm -hmm. northwest uh, south and east uh, north being the top of the map it's not actually north in this particular case but uh, that's not the important part I suppose and she starts walking off east, kind of casually walking, um, chatting a little bit. I'll just follow her and trust that she knows where, she, where she's going. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go, I'll stay in the back. Okay. Because uh, I'm letting the magic people look for the magic thing. All right. Um. She ex she points to the, the crossings and says, some of these are likely due to be replaced uh, with all the extra water that keeps coming in as well as the tides themselves. They do tend to be washed away. It's part of the duties we have down here, part of the need for us to continue ever vigilant no matter what's going on in the surface world. Also, debris tends to gather down here, all sorts of things. <laughs> Sometimes interesting things, sometimes shiny things. I like the shiny things myself. Uh, how much weight can these things support? I'm assuming we'd have to cross one by one if we want to be safe. Oh, it's the safest, of course, to cross one by one. I, I wouldn't go dancing, although if you asked me nicely, I wouldn't turn you down. <laughs> giggle. Well, not giggle, but like snicker. <laughs> Um, it is, your eyes are watering a little bit, and at first you think, well, you're standing a little close to Marta, and then you realize, no, it's just the general kind of, uh, effect of the whole place. Everybody roll Again, a constitution saving us. throw. Everybody roll what? Constitution saving throw. If you are, are, uh, immune or resistant to poison, that is appropriate. Okay, I am immune. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I mentioned it. I knew somebody was. Okay. God damn it. Oof. So for uh, Silas, <coughs> the smell is unpleasant, um, but you you and you find it a little bit caustic, but it's not bothering you. Um, you're aware of it. For uh, for Annie. Um, You've had to be in a lot of different places, uh, stowed on board a ship, for example, uh, and probably be uh, uh, having skulked around some of the less savory parts of the, uh, the buildings back home. It doesn't quite prepare you for this, but you're able to kind of hold your breakfast pretty easily. Medrick, unfortunately... Sorry? <laughs> Moats are gross to cross. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, But Medrick, unfortunately, you're finding this uh, very, very difficult. Every once in a while, you look over at the sort of greenish, brackish water, and it's like something is bubbling up inside of it, and you're pretty sure that's not a piece of tree, and, oh, God, what have I done? And you really can't help yourself. The, your breakfast, while it tasted great going in, unfortunately launched itself back out with a bit more of violence and a lot less wonder. Uh, well, well Marta, there, Marta, there's my contribution to the scene. Yeah, it, it, it's quickly disappeared into the uh, into the water that's flowing behind you. Uh, Marta pats you on the back quite vigorously. There, there, there. It's not an uncommon reaction, I'm afraid. You get used to it after a few dozen years. I've seen bodies in various states of decomposition, but this is something else. Well, I mean... You might even have a few bodies in various states of decomposition down here. All sorts of things flow in. There was a shipwreck once. It was, oh, I think a dozen years or so ago. Everyone went down, all hands lost. Terrible tragedy just out there in the bay. Ah, oh, we were picking up bodies out of the sewers for weeks after that. Ah, uh, some of them didn't want to go away. That was uh, <laughs> funny times. I'm glad you had fun. <clears throat> Why, thank you. Um, and she kind of leads you across one of these walkways. I walk across very carefully. You see that Marta steps pretty confidently across it. Um, She's a lot lighter than I am, though. <laughs> but yeah, as you kind of put your foot onto it, it's not so much that it feels like it's soft or going to break, but there is a sort of sheen on top of the surface of the wood. It's a little bit like... Uh, a little bit like... Uh, um, um, slime, almost, that's growing on it, and you notice that your boots have a little bit of green residue as you cross over. It's probably alive. <laughs> oh, just about everything down here is alive, my boy. One way or the other. Let's see here. Again, I apologize for my awkwardness. I haven't done this kind of uh, revealing uh, mechanism, so it's a little slower for me to actuate. As you go and see that there are more tunnels up ahead. Um, making her way slowly around everything. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, are you guys asking any questions about what you're seeing or not? Um, I want just giving you an opportunity to jump in any time here. If not, I mean, she can continue. Probably going. not. Silas okay. is pretty quiet. Okay. Yeah. Medrick just mainly wants to get, find the thing we're looking for, break it or take it with us, and, or, and leave, like, <laughs> leaving ASAP. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't think being completely silent is productive as much. Uh, I'd be asking uh, if there's anything knew that she's noticed being down here other than it being very more wet and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The tides go out as normal, but the water levels don't drop as quickly as they once did. So much more water coming from up above, I suspect. And we've had... Um, a few sightings of fish and other things that have floated in with them. Uh, we haven't seen anything yet, but uh, we have seen a few uh, disturbing sights of, of bite marks and things on some of these crossing ways. And I suspect there's a few wild animals trying to escape from the bay. Um, as you Great. walk along, too, you also notice that the walls are, are stone and cement. 
and they seem to be uh, permanently slick all the way practically to the ceiling. Um, and you get the sense that when this these tunnels flood, they flood all the way to the ceiling. So you mentioned there's a crew that takes care of these tunnels. Oh, yeah. Has, has anybody new joined them or joined the crew in their last few weeks? Oh, there's always a few here and there that join in looking for some <laughs> easy money. We try to tell them that it's not so easy as they might suspect, but uh, they think that having to move away some errant wood that's floated in and blocking things or dealing with silt buildup and drains is not so hard work, and it's not. Uh, but they quickly learn that the environment may not suit them. So we have new people from time to time. A few new uh, friend the ships came in. Your ship, I think, had a few people on it. It came in. Yeah, some, people, some people talking about the glory days of fighting. I can't see too much glory in fighting. I'd rather, and she waves her hand expansively, I'd rather celebrate architecture that's lasted for hundreds of years. That's nice, too, but to each their own. It is most impressive. Yeah. She kind of beams at you. I know. My family, my great-grandfather built most of this. My great-grandmother had a great hand in actually getting it built. He more designed it. But it has been the pride of the family for a long, long time. I suppose that's done now. I'm the last of my line. Uh, you might want to move the uh, public view map. Yep, thank you. There we go. Actually, I'm going to zoom that out a little bit. So you get a sense of the size. The water does seem to sort of flow in and around, generally moving east to west in this area. Um, again, not really north in the absolute sense, but um, that's the general flow of the water. Um, let's see. Look at my notes. Uh, let me have hmm. let me have a perception check from Annie, please. Okay. Mm -mm. Oops, I gotta get my <clears throat> too many sheets. Brain melting down. Pardon me. There we go. Oh, um, here's a question maybe Pat knows. Is there a way to roll secretly from a character sheet? Uh, I yeah. don't. Uh, I believe it's in, um, there is a way. Um, I'm going to try something simple. You'll see a, a, a roll pop up for a wolf. There is no wolf, but just so you know. I just want to see if that that does it okay you did see that one yes yep. that was definitely not it okay i think it might be in the character sheet settings maybe okay well, I, wonder. I thought it might have been something off the top of your head if it's not that's fine i'll just make the roll in in, in uh, manual uh manual mode here so you won't see the source of the roll Nope. Uh, we can see where this mm. is. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, I need to adjust something. Uh, where are you? Okay. Meanwhile, there's scary silence. Pardon me. There's something alive down here. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I have a button that's appeared. Why do I have a button that's appeared? Oh. 
Yeah, that's that's a whisper. Yeah, I was wondering if you could send a roll in a whisper. All right. I'm trying to see if I've got the right. Oh no, that's the wrong token. Uh, pardon me as I find myself. <laughs> uh, I was working on this map up to the last minute, and then I was going, where where did I put that thing? Where is that thing? Um, there it is. I think it was around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, Annie, as you're kind of dragging a little bit behind and watching, um, kind of warily watching around, um, something strikes your eye uh, as you look towards the water flowing just that you've just kind of come to the crest of there now. Um, it appears as though um, a log underneath the water uh, kind of bobs up close to the surface and then quickly bobs downward. But something about it feels different. Um, it seems to, and it takes you a moment as you're kind of walking along to think of it uh, as it bobbed and fell down against the flow of the water. So that was your observation. I think there's something following us in the water. Oh, what is it? Where is it? I don't know. It looked like a log going against the current. Maybe it was a sea otter. They sometimes swim in through the intake. Although if they've done so, that does mean that some of the barriers have broken. I'll have to make sure we do a full check down by the water. Those uh, those intake spots, they are battered the most from all the different bits and pieces floating around. She continues to kind of walk on. Was it going towards us or away from us? It was... I don't know, which way was it going, Mark? <laughs> it wasn't really that it had emotion, it's that it stayed in place while the water around it was moving. And it looks like it was coming from uh, down sort of this way. This way? Yeah. yeah. I, you, did you see the note? I just noticed that it didn't pop up on uh, mine. Just a I second. See. There we go. So down that way, roughly. Cool, cool. Well, we should definitely keep an eye out. Yeah. And I'll just stare over there to make sure it doesn't pop up again. Okay. Make a perception check. For Medric, that is. That's better. Okay. Medric, you, you uh, are pretty sure that you saw what she was talking about uh, as some, some sort of brown log-like shape pops up just around the corner and then vanishes. Uh, but much, much closer than it was before and vanishes kind of around this corner. Um, it, I didn't describe it, my mistake, uh, but on the edges here, there is that ledge, essentially, of stone. And then what looks to be maybe curved tunnel underneath um, where all the green water actually is. Okay. And she continues to move along. Somewhere. I'll take my shield out and my hammer too. I, I, won't, I won't like activate the shield yet, but I'll be ready for something. <laughs> okay. Because I don't like that giant log. Like either something's following us, as Annie said, where a giant took a shit in the sewers. I mean, neither one's terribly pleasant. No. <laughs> um, and Marta leads on up ahead. Um, Marta, be careful. I know this place like the back of my hand. Oh, there's a mole I haven't seen before. And she kind of chuckles. Um, and as she's walking over, she kind of grimaces because there, although I don't have it on the map, unfortunately, I forgot, uh, there is a bridge that she looks like she was about to step on right about there. Um, and it's broken. Uh, the bridge has been cleared out. And you can see that there's a little bit of, of, uh, of an eddy current, essentially, right here, where it looks like stones have kind of accumulated in the corner. Um, and she kind of reaches into her back bag and uh, rummages for a moment, 
and pulls out a uh, a, a uh, what well, looks like a, a, a wooden pole. She pulls out. A, it's about uh, three feet long. And pulls out another piece and kind of screws the two of them together. Pulls out another piece, screws the three of them together to get about a nine foot pole, and starts pro- pro- probing around in the the water down there, uh, kind of poking away at the rocks. Ah, oh, this is the kind of thing that we have to do. If we don't clear out some of this, then the whole place could end up getting more and more flooded or more rocks and stones could actually, uh, you know, push more of the, the, the grates out of the way or the bridges. It's a never-ending duty. But such is life. Um, can I have a perception check from Medric, please? <coughs> ah. Um, it looks like she's going to be busy for a while. At least she doesn't seem to be slowing down. It's kind of consumed all of her attention for the moment. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Are they on mute? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, just keeping an eye out. Yeah. All I said was, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, keep, keeping an eye out, uh, like I said, I'm letting the magic people look for the magic thing because I don't know what is magic. Okay. So I'm have... keeping an eye out for anything that looks out of place, but I don't know the space. So. Okay. Marta moves a little bit further along. I gotta. I'll go check on that. Uh, we got a package probably. Delivery always happens at the wrong time. We'll take a brief moment. I could go into further description of how bad this smells, I suppose. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> also good. I wanted to make sure it was evocative without going too far, but I may have gone too far. Uh, uh, while he checks out, I'm going to run to the washroom. Okay. Me too. Okay. All right. I will Interlude figure. music, washroom break. I, you know what? I think I even have a pause screen. So we will pause for about five minutes or maybe less while folks have a little bit of a uh, break. I almost hung up instead of muted.
I have returned. What was the package? Actually, it might be mini Santa Santa hats. I've gotten on a Santa kick for all my gargoyles. So uh, <laughs> nice. We will resume, uh, and I need from uh, Annie and from Silas. I need a perception check. Where did I? No. Hey, <laughs> no. All right. Okay. And 13. <clears throat> well, unfortunately. Oh, pardon me. Unfortunately, I am. I should have eaten supper. Um. <laughs> None of you are aware, although you quickly hear some splashing and are taken a bit by surprise. So am I, because that did not move as I expected it to. There we go. As from the water, this sort of seeming uh, surface broken by a log at first, uh, then emerges following it a tentacle. Uh, let's see. It strikes out toward... Uh, actually, towards Silas. Silas, as it comes towards you, you have a flash of recognition. This is something you have de dealt with before. Something your family, in fact, hunts. Mm. But a little larger than you expected it to be. A little bigger. This would be the somewhat mythical and often very, very tasty crabtopus. Half crab, half octopus. <laughs> Launches out its its uh, its uh, hand toward or its tentacle towards you. Uh, does an eighteen hit? Um, where is my? Yes, it does. All right. Uh, the uh, the tentacle grabs onto you and pulls you into the water closer to it. We will now roll initiative. In just a second as I get the initiative counter up. That's not the button I wanted. There it is. Get the initiative. Oh, these are all old. All right, just a second. Clear all of those. Remember when you're going to roll initiative that you need to select your icon first and then hit the initiative button so it shows up properly on the initiative. Ooh. I have this guy. It didn't show up properly, of course. Where is the initiative button? Oh, here it is. Whoop. I think this is the first time I did this properly. <laughs> it, it's, it's tricky to get right, unfortunately. Why um, did I drop to a nine? I'm supposed to be an 11.12. Uh, somehow I might have selected yours when I... Yes, I think I selected yours somehow by and, and re-rolled it for you. I don't know how that was possible. Um, and the Crabtopus, I think, is a 9.12. Yeah, I was looking at the one that came after it there. All right, eventually I did it all right. And for her, I don't have... <laughs> sheet for her, but uh, we will add Marta in. Um, all right. uh, let's see. Marta, Medric, Craptopus, Annie, and... Oh, look at that. Everybody's there. Starting... Okay. So the Craptopus has grabbed Silas, now has its tentacle wrapped around him, and is dragging him into the water. Uh, not a problem, really, for Silas, for the two things that might affect him. Uh, but he is submerged and only barely visible. Um, you find that your feet just barely touch the, the, uh, the bottom surface. 
of the uh, tunnel, uh, Silas, but it is slick underneath your feet. Uh, we begin with Annie. Hello. Um, I will grab my short bow. Okay. And try to shoot it. The creature is half submerged, which gives it uh, half cover. Okay. Whoa, that doesn't matter, though, because that is a crit. No, it's not. I don't know why it's showing up like that. Oh, weird. It was a 15 plus 6. Huh, okay. Here. That is kind of weird. Um, and shoot, I had my... Uh, it looks like there's a plus 1d0 in there somewhere. Which means it automatically crits on the D zero. Oh, that's an <laughs> unexpected transformation. A crit on a D zero. Uh, one thing I just have to look up something. Um, mm -mm. Uh, I know what's up. I forgot to. Is there a bonus in there that's supposed to apply? No. Nope. Okay. So five piercing damage, uh, and you know what? I'm just going to, I forgot that this isn't my computer and Brody has uh, the beyond 20 set up a different way than I like it. So let's roll. I am next to it too, so you do get uh... Yeah, so I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to do that just to be able to click it from there. So that's nine, and then uh, I'm just going to I'm going to sneak it down. There you go. Okay, so 18 total, total damage? Yeah. All right. A palpable hit. Uh, as the arrow goes flying into the water and uh, uh, smashes into the the slightly visible tentacle uh, just above the water. Uh, Silas, you feel it kind of shudder with uh, with the pain. Uh, um, That's your action. And my bonus will be to... Excuse me. Uh... I want to use that as a way to try to help Silas uh, have be able to get out okay. as the help. Yeah. Okay, so we, you you feel some encouragement come your way. Um, she hits it. Yeah, you you shoot it in in the same tentacle that's holding him, which will make it a little bit easier to to potentially wriggle outward. Yeah. Um, are you moving at all? Uh, I'm going to take two steps this way. Okay. Uh, make your perception check. Perception. Seven. Okay. Uh, Marta uh, sees this thing uh, reaching over and grabbing her, her new friend. Uh, kind of calls it, oh dear, what a horrible thing, and whacks at it with her nine-foot pole. Put him down. And kind of ineffectually, but very vigorously, whacks it across the back of its shell. Medric. I'll reach for Silas and grab him. Okay. And try to pull him back on the uh, ledge. All right, then that'll be, uh, I guess, contested athletics versus uh, the uh, your bonus, uh, Marie. How does that apply? I keep forgetting this, and something we should verify because it apply to everybody, or does it like does it apply to the opponent? She's helping a specific person, which in this case would be me. Okay, it is a specific person. Um, like if you're on a help action, if it's generally 
the next person who does a thing to this thing or gotcha. it's yeah i forget it was the help action that's the specific one there because that the help action is targeting a particular person okay thank you very much uh medric it is a contested uh, athletics versus its uh, ability to hold on <laughs> essentially ha! i squat down and i pull oh. as hard as i can just like do it in actual squat but with silas and uh, you grab Silas by the coat and yank him up, and the, the tentacle is not able to grip onto him. It might have something to do with the fact that everything now is very slimy, or it may have something to do with the arrow sticking out of its, its, uh, its tentacle. It's hard to say, but you do manage to pull Medric free from, or sorry, pull Silas Silas. free from the Crabtopus. Silas, you are, are back up on land again. Um, and I'll just have you put right up there. Uh, Medric, that was your action. You still have a move yeah. and a bonus, technically. I'll stand defensive. Okay. Silas, these are really tasty on the outs on the inside, but probably not so much on the outs inside. Outside, I'll get it right eventually. It was, I just ruined the joke. <laughs> well, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. There we go. Uh, you do reek, by the way. Although it doesn't bother you, Medric, you kind of realize that your friend is now covered in sort of greenish goop. How and so are my hands because I pulled him out. How deep was the water that it was in? Uh, just about up to your shoulders. Neck deep in shit. <laughs> mm. uh, it's only well, partially. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, spit a uh, nuts. Got a uh, got an NPC here, uh, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh. I'm going to grab a uh, a uh, sling stone out of my pouch. Uh, actually, three of them, and I'm going to use a bonus action to charge one up or charge them up, and then I'm going to throw one at it. And get an 11. Yeah, unfortunately, it kind of plops into the water just beside it. That's it for my actions. All right. Uh, this one, uh, not happy with having lost its meal, moves over. I'm going to say moves over here. Uh, and once again, launches its uh, tentacle out, this time at Medric. and tries to grab onto you. 24. I'm standing defense, defensive, though. Does it roll? Oh, I guess even with disadvantage. You have yeah, to actually take an action to do that, though. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, even with disadvantage in this particular case, it rolled really, really well. Uh, and then grabs you and pulls you down into the water beside it. Uh, uh, I spit it. curses under the water, which is... Yeah. Probably not a great timing uh, when you think about no. it. Uh, but it pulls you closer and actually... Uh, will uh, peck away at you as it kind of pulls you in, in towards the center of its being. And you see that in the very center, it's actually got uh, what looks like some sort of weird beak-shaped thing, which snaps at you underneath the water. You feel it, or you hear it, but you feel it more than hear it, actually. Uh, does a 17 hit? Just one too low. 18 AC. Okay. It bounces off your, your armor and you kind of you kind of suck in your gut just enough that it, it uh, is very short of actually biting you. Uh, can I have from Annie a perception check, please? Yes. Okay. Luckily for you. Uh, mm -hmm. as you kind of hear a burble in the water behind you. And another one appears from just behind, which I just realized. Cool. Just a this. reminder that things can't surprise me as long as I'm conscious. Oh, right. Thank you for the reminder. It's been a while since yeah. that came up. Well, then you are not surprised, although you did not see it coming. Um, you. Yeah. There we go. I'm just... Very focused on making sure that nothing hurts me. That is very fair. Uh, and you're focused and aware as one of them emerges from the water and goes, I'm going to hurt you. 
It seems to have that in its mind. You're pretty sure that it intended that. Uh, as it launches a tentacle up towards you as well. But a nine will not hit. Uh, as it sort of slaps the tentacle off of the the uh, stone beside you, leaving a sort of slimy trail behind it. Uh, and that is the two of actually, and it's going to move, kind of swim over right next to you. Uh, you're up, however, Andy. Well, it's next to me now, so I will pull out Vice. Okay. The bluish glow of the blade kind of lights up the place a little bit. Try to stab it in the in the head. Okay. <laughs> uh, it has kind of come up out of the water, so it won't apply for that. Well, a 20 hits anyway. Yeah. Um, let's see if this works. Did I fix the thing? Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, it, it just takes the eight because it hasn't lost hit points and I'm not under half. Okay. Um, a good solid stab downward and it lets out a, a, a weird sort of hissing wine whistle sort of sound. It's not really making any sense to you. It, it might be angry or maybe it just had too much pressure inside like a teapot. You're not really sure what that means. Um, however, the rest of you do hear from around the corner a bit of sloshing and then this sound. Uh, Silas, you actually recognize the sound of uh, one of these um, from around the corner. Uh, well, I know that it has a fairly long attack range because it was the dude was originally here and Silas was originally here. So I'm going to go there. Okay. It looks longingly in your direction. Yep. Uh, and uh, I will tell Medric to uh, brain, how can I creatively do this? <laughs> uh, try to stab it under, uh, try to stab it underneath the uh, the tentacle. My brain was like arm, but that's okay. not what <laughs> it has. Functionally <laughs> so the same, it. but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stab it underneath uh, the uh, the arm leg tentacle thing. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, to use my ability to give him advantage. The help action. Okay. Well, and that is me. Marta once again is moving over closer. Actually, she doesn't have to move close. She has a nine-foot pole. <laughs> uh, and will attempt to, uh, to to batter away at this uh, thing. Uh, and strikes it. Look at that. Nice. As she beans it over the head with her uh, nine-foot pole. Ouch. That actually hurt. Quite a bit. Why am I not able to? Ugh. Technology. You rolled a D five. Hmm. You rolled a D five. Oh, well, that's even better. I can't see my keys. I bought a backlit <laughs> keyboard, and the backlit keyboard's not strong enough to to uh, to avoid the glare from my overhead lights, so I can't see any of the keys anymore. Wow, that's even better. Ooh, max damage. But the problem now is I can't select the thing. Oh, there we go. I wasn't able to select the thing to actually uh, um, to actually do the damage. Uh, and with that, um, uh, the, the I like how that Marta was the trigger for this. She batters it across the back of the shell, and 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 the, you see uh, right up close, uh, Medric, where the the pole seems to slip down that wasn't doing anything against the hard shell, but kind of slips down and kind of ends up poking it a little bit in the eye, which you can see is massive right beside you. Uh, and it lets out a sort of squeal, hiss, whistle, the same sort of thing you had before. And uh, you feel the whole thing because you're attached to it kind of convulse. 
Uh, and then um, first as a bubble just below the surface of the water, but then spraying outward in all directions uh, is this enormous uh, blast of black and blue that splashes over the entire area. Uh, let's see here. Have I also mentioned that I'm... <laughs> I've got a floating bite icon I can't get rid of, and it's covering over half of my 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 menu, so I can't get to anything. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's just a day. Uh, uh, okay, so I need to draw, and that area is splashed with a black gooey ink. It aerosolizes as it gets outside of the water, splashing over... Uh, 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 actually, just missing uh, Marta and just missing Annie, but catching Silas Square and catching Medric Square. I need both of you to make a. Uh, what did I put it here as a uh, a Constitution saving throw? Fifteen. All right. Do I get advantage because like not much of my body is exposed because most of it's underwater? <laughs> it's underwater as well. Ah, damn it. Hey, that's good. Okay. Both of you managed to blink at just the right time as this stuff coats over you. And you can, as you kind of open your eyes, you feel this, this, this heavy, almost ink floating over your face. Both of you are covered and coated in it. Uh, and uh, it, it uh, seeps in around your eyes, but you're blinking enough that you keep it from blinding you. Uh, but then it moves. And it moves, where is its movement? That far, dragging Medric with it. Oh, I'm going to whack it. Uh, yeah, you're not blinded, so you can go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I have not powered it up, though, so all I get is this. Nope. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you're trying to, to whack away at it. And the, the little bit of extra goo that's on your hands makes the staff slide a little bit, not connecting with anything. Uh, Medric, you're being dragged along. Uh, let's see. It is your turn, however. All right. So the shield lights up. Okay. Whoosh, and I grab the warhammer, like, just by the neck so I can still, like, hit with it, even though I'm, like, mainly in water. And Medric's pretty tall, too, so he, like, he's got, like, space to maneuver. So I'll uh, hit it with the warhammer. Three, you're three quarters in the water, so it's not a lot of space to maneuver. Okay. And remember, you're also uh, restrained, so you have disadvantage. But Annie yeah. gave me advantage. Which makes it even. Didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So warhammer. So That's 15 a hit. to hit. That's a hit. Or five damage. Okay. And I uh, believe the shield was a uh, 1d6 plus charisma fire damage. Um, if you attack with it. Yeah. Which I will do as a bonus action. Yeah, and does it roll with, this, with a dexterity again? Because I, I had the window open for the item description, <laughs> but then I closed it, and I won't, it won't let me reopen it. Uh, yeah, I know there's a there's a bug with um, okay with uh, roll twenty that I've had the same thing. I've just got it open here now. Um, bonus action. It's a charisma bonus that you uh, you attack with, and it was one d six plus your charisma fire damage. Uh, but you can't so activate it. Plus... You can't activate it and mm -hmm. use it on the same turn because it's a bonus action to activate. So I can't use it and activate it at the same turn? Right. It's a bonus action to activate okay. it, and it's a bonus action to attack with it. Okay, right. I was mixing it up with the uh, spiritual weapon. Right. Right. So you activate the shield. It's it's lighting up and burning. For now, you're... Uh... <laughs> I did the same thing. I opened up the, the item. Now I can't open it again. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to remember that. <sighs> I'll grab onto the light as a bonus action, then. Or I'll try to like wedge the warhammer like on some kind of like anchor spot. Okay. On, on alongside the tunnel. You're, you're, yeah, you're being dragged along, and you're trying to find some anchor for this thing. 
Uh, it's not it's not finding much purchase at the moment, however. Um, that is your turn, Silas. Um. Yeah, I think Silas is just going to throw another magic stone at it. Okay. 19 to hit, 7 bludgeoning damage. That is enough ah. to hit it and do a significant amount of damage to it. It's not happy. Uh, Medric, you can feel it kind of. the Right now, there's there's a, a tremendous amount of oozing of a dark, viscous, uh, presuming blood, although it looks a little bit weird color from what you're used to, uh, bubble, bubbling out of this from the numerous little wounds it's received, uh, and it's still uh, uh, bleeding profusely from the arrow wound as well. All right, so that was your action. Are you going to move? Let me get rid of... Uh... Oh, um... Yeah, he probably. Six. This may get him a, an attack of opportunity from the other one, but uh, we'll try to get down there so he's between Medric and where it's going. Um, as you pass over the bridge, um, you find that both of them reach out for you. Sure. Uh, let's see here. Oh, shoot, that was a bonus action. Oh, well. Um, uh, let's see. This one will reach out with this attack. I just realized I don't have that one as the proper attack. Um, the other one grabs a hold of you before you get across the bridge, holding you fast. Okay. And the other one doesn't have an attack for that, so it will not actually attack. Oh wait, actually no, it has multiple multiple tentacles. It will try to grab you as well. That'd be funny. Fights mm -hmm. over you. Uh does a thirteen hit you? No. Nope. No. Okay. So he reaches out sadly, but unfortunately it's too busy with this 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 squirming mor morsel of food which refuses just to, you know, be eaten. Uh but you are caught by that one as you try to go over across the bridge. Yep. Um that was your action and move. Do you have a bonus action? Um, I'll charge up the staff. Okay. Does the staff look different than the uh, the other one did when it charges? Um, because I think this is the first time using this staff in this way. Yeah, it probably. I don't know. It probably just looks a little more real. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looks um, like actually, it probably just the crystal parts glow a little, uh, glow a bit more strongly. It looks more solid. Okay, it gets a little more firm and and uh, and ready to get, go. Okay, uh, these guys. Um, this one I just realized that I can do as a bonus action that thing, so we'll do that too. But first, uh, the one that has a hold of Medric is trying to determine whether it can eat him faster than it, he can be eaten or rather faster than he can eat, eat it. Uh, so it is going to... Yeah, it's going to try to just bite down on you. Um, first by pecking away at you with its enormous beak. Does a 14 hit? I don't think a 14 hits. Nope. Uh, then by closing down with the, uh, the tentacle it has around you, uh, that's uh, 10 bludgeoning damage. It doesn't have to hit because it already has you. Should have thought no, of that before. Um, and then shoots out a tentacle towards Annie. Which, uh, 14, I don't think hits Annie. Nope. Nope. As the tentacle goes flying on by you. You get the sense of it almost being desperate, but it does sort of maybe be a little vengeful. I mean, you did actually fire an arrow at it that it doesn't like. Um, the other one drags uh, Silas once more into the water. And... Will f actually, it can also fire at a tentacle from that distance at Annie. So it's going to try. It's not going to succeed, but it's going to try. Uh, it's going to try to bite down on Silas because it has you right there. Ooh, that one does hit. 24? Uh, yep. As you feel uh, the, the, the 
And you, you've been up close to these things before, maybe not this close before, and you know that they can be deadly, but they are usually pretty tasty. Uh, this one yep. might be less tasty just because of what it is. And you feel its tentacle around you squeeze inward for an, for 11 damage. Okay. I was forgetting why these things were so dangerous. Then I realized, oh, once they get a hold of you, they really hurt. Yep. Uh, Silence is down to 11 hit points. Um, that is... Oh, and then... Yeah, it's going to take off. Uh, because it doesn't... Whoops, I didn't mean to spin you around. Uh, it's going to start to take off in this direction, dragging you with it. At half speed. Uh, yep. Uh, and actually, the same thing happening here. Uh, Medric, the creature is dragging you along behind it. It kind of moves under this bridge, so you're not standing on the. It's not standing on the bridge, just so you know. Uh, Annie, your friends have been literally pulled away from you. This is not good. Which um, choice do you make? Who's who's the bigger friend? <laughs> more who who can uh, take care of themselves more. Um, the one that has Medric has taken more damage, right? You believe so? You hit it with that arrow pretty well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go to here. Can I see the creature? Yep, it's it's basically half cover in the water, but it's because it's dragging behind someone, it's a little more easy to see. Cool. Um I will then grab my bow again. That's a hit. Okay, that is not the right thing. There. Is this guy the one that has Silas? Yes. Okay. That is Six for that, and then eight sneak attack. Okay. So that makes 14. 14 points of damage. Uh, not quite enough for that. Uh, but you do solidly hit it, and uh, you kind of the arrow whizzes right by Silas as you you feel like it was trying to sort of defend itself, but still finds that little pocket of space and kind of lands thunk into the into the center part of the body. Uh, and Silas, you feel the whole thing kind of shiver with with uh, pain. Uh, and yeah, I will uh, once again like have tried to aim to in a way to make it easier for Silas to get Ooh. out. All yeah, right, maybe you can use the arrow as a pivot point or or target or something. It's hard to say. Um, you, I think you still have some movement left if you want to. Because you only moved I won't 10. Be okay. <laughs> because I can see both of them. That's a fair point. Uh, <laughs> Medric, or sorry, Marta shuffles over towards there and kind of waves her her nine foot pole somewhat indignantly. Now you to stop that, Medric. You heard Marta's war cry. Now, now you just stop that. Is it going to help you? <laughs> see if I can get rid of Well, it's going to stop. I got rid of Marta, my mistake. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, no. Marta! She disappeared. All right. I have Marta here. Um, where'd she go? Uh, there she is. Hello, Marta. Hello, Marta. Hello, father. No. Why? <laughs> uh, Medric, what are you up to? Well, that crabtopus is going to get cooked, whether it's in a restaurant or not. So it's going to... I'm going to cast Burning Hands at it. Okay, there you go. You do have a... Uh, it's even because it still has your grapple, but uh, the... No, actually, sorry. Annie didn't help you. So it's a disadvantage. No, it's a... It's not advantage or disadvantage. It's a, I just oh, roll and... It's not a yeah. save. It's a hmm? It's not a to hit. I, I forget the spell. It's been a while. I thought it was I think a, it's a, a save. Yeah, three d six plus. Uh, I forget if it's three d six plus modifier or not. Damn it! I just looked it up too. Uh, oh, fifteen foot cone. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, dexterity saving throw for, from it, basically. Yeah, right. Okay, so there's no bonuses. It's just like straight up three d six. 
Uh, 3d6 and a failed save. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can't really get the advantage because it's it's uh, it's right there. So let's see if that rolled out. That was DC terrible. is 13. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, yeah, no, it, it totally failed. Uh, how much damage did it take? 12. 12 points. With some satisfaction, you see the flames of Ignis spar, uh, sp uh, spin up in your hand, and a cone of fire erupts, burning away and uh, maybe filling your nose with some unpleasant odors as several uh, something or others floating in the water also ignite. But the creature is uh, is boiled alive as you see the water around it bubbling and uh, sh and uh, shimmering and shaking. It, it itself, in its death throes, shakes back and forth, trying to to uh, hurl away what it once thought was a tasty mor morsel, which would have been you. Uh, but you succeed in destroying it. Uh -huh. It smells really bad. This was not the soup to boil it in. No, but better it than me. Now I'm leaving here. I'm assuming going up on the ledge takes half my movement. If you're going to climb up, yes. One, two, three. Oh, sorry, it's it's difficult terrain. It takes double movement, not not half your movement. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm right here. As you step back up on the ledge, though, uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, D20... Eight. <laughs> Unfortunately, covered in slime as you are, this is extraordinarily slippy, slippery, and you fall down prone. I'm going to say you're prone just here. there as you got back up. Um, that is half of your remaining movement if you want to stand up again. Yeah, I'll stand up again. <laughs> okay. uh, and then if you do not want to have to make a slipping rolls, it will be difficult terrain to move for a moment. All right. Are you uh, are you done moving? Yeah. And you did your action and movement. You do have your bonus action. Yeah, but I'm too far away from the other thing. I could yep. throw the shield at it, but I, I then I I'm gonna lose it. So I, I mean, I, let's not do getting that. it back. It doesn't come back to you automatically, so that would no. be problematic. Maybe uh, like you, you said, it drew it drew with me. Like, what if I had like a flaming Captain America shield? Okay, I want that. I want. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm now like 10% more invested in this character. <laughs> Captain Amedrica. <laughs> uh, that is your turn. Silas, this thing is dragging you away. Now you've 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 heard your family hasn't suffered this particular fate, but you heard that these creatures will drag people out to sea to their to their uh, hidey holes and feast on them there if they feel it's too dangerous. Yep. Uh, Silas is going to use the advantage Annie gave him and try to get free. Okay. Uh, struggling against it. Let's see if it can, how it does. Uh, it did pretty good. I got a 15, so no. Unfortunately, uh, it seems to have a hold of you, a good grip, and uh, the arrow that was shot in its uh, in its cheek is just spurring it on even further and faster. It's totally not wanting to stop. Um, that was your action. Your move is negated because you're grabbed. You do have a bonus potentially. Nope. Okay. Uh, the creature is going to uh, squeeze. It's going to cr try to crush you as it moves along. Uh, seven bludgeoning damage. I'm glad it rolled crappy. Uh, and then proceeds to move. Uh, we're going to move to there, dragging you along with it. Uh, and... Uh, it will try to bite at you, actually, because it can do that. Oh, uh, you'll need to reposition the... Uh... Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, it gets advantage to attack me, but a 16 does not hit. Unfortunately, your your natural toughness comes in as it tries to get a snatch of you. A little, a little morsel, because, you know, a lot of this is really hard work. And, you know, you need a snack from time to time. And it kind of thought it had, like, a portable snack as well as a meal, but apparently not. Also, it wraps me up against, against me. <laughs> uh, Annie, your friend is receding somewhat into the water distance. Yeah, that's not good. Um, mm -hmm. 
I will select my token. Um, <laughs> uh, I will go here and can I still see it? Yep. Again, he's, he's like half cover in the water, but bobbing along and dragging the somewhat flailing, uh, Silas as well. Cool. I can no longer, um, help Silas with my ability. Um, actually then can't. I can see it, still see it from here too. Mm -hmm. yeah. The water level is only a little bit below the ledge. Okay. Um, well, I will try to shoot it in the arm again. All right. This has been working so far. It's true. 14? 14 is a hit. Cool. Ooh. damage for that and then snake attack nice <laughs> that's nasty oh, Two rogues, boards man. The rogues man well uh with the other arrow kind of flying you're going know, to take that extra moment kind of line it up and whoosh, it flies out goes in through the water uh and oh shoot it has half cover that was a miss Oh no! Because the half cover it. gives it gives it uh, plus two AC. Yep. So the the arrow goes diving into the water. You think for certain? I've heard it. I've hit it. I've heard it. And unfortunately, uh, Silas, from your perspective, you can see that the arrow kind of glanced off of its armor underneath the water. I hail out. Almost. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> You can do it. Um, and I'm actually going to give Medric the advantage to try to hit it then. Okay. Uh, try hitting its arms so that Silas can get out. I'll do my best. And wait. Okay. Okay, I will cast Scorching Ray at it. Well, let's let Ma let Marta go. Oh, right. I forgot about Marta. Um, although at this point, there's not a lot she can do from there. Um, she will make her way over um, sort of past you. Uh, actually, can get right to the edge there uh, and is watching. Oh, dear. That's not looking good. She's gotten a little bit younger. I don't know why. The voice just kind of slipped away. Sorry about that. Um, I'll return to it when she's calmer. Uh, but it is Medric's turn. Scorching Ray. Oof. That is a 17. hit. That is a hit. Woo. I just looked it up. Why did I forget? <laughs> Someday I'll have like a memory skill. Or like I'll level up my intelligence in real life. <laughs> I keep thinking I'll get better memory, but then I forget to do it. Yeah. What the hell? It's here somewhere. 2d6, okay. Max damage. Eh. Average damage. Uh, you get two more attacks, though. Oh, right. Yep, it's more than one. There's three of them. This much? Uh, is it? It's not three separate hit rolls, is it? It's three separate attack rolls. Oh, okay. So you, that's you can now. fire targets. Yeah, I don't have this spell on Zacchaeus, so I didn't know how it worked. And if you have advantage on the first one. Okay. So a second attack roll. Okay, so the first one still hits, but it's not a critical. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or. Second one. So roll to attack the second time. Yeah, the second. The second. The was that twenty-four. Uh, no, that was the twenty-four. Was <laughs> was the advantage on the first roll? Now you have to make a second attack roll for the second, or a first attack roll for the second ray. Okay. Because Andy gave you advantage on the first first shot. It could have been a twenty, okay. so it was basically crit hunting at that point. 
So for the second one, we'll I'll accept the nine damage if it's uh, if it's a hit. That's a hit. Uh, that that is a hit. Yep, nice. Thirteen Ooh. so far, and then roll to attack on the last one. Hey. Oh, and there's a crit. Wait, why did you roll uh, so many that, times? That's two d twenty. I don't know. Oh shit. Well, the the first d twenty is a twenty, so we'll take that as the hit roll. Uh, plus five is twenty five, which is more than enough to hit. Uh, roll hey. uh, double the dice. So uh, either two d six times two or forty six. Your choice. Woo. Really? Uh, well, that's okay. fourteen plus yeah, nine yeah. plus four. So and with that last scorching points. ray, um, with you up close, uh, Silas, there is a, a, a smell that happens when the burning hits this particular creature. Um, and you know what? For a moment there, it's not entirely unpleasant. It gives you nice memories of when uh, the family has landed one of these creatures and the delightful feast they have that evening. There's a little bit of edge of the unfortunate spice of the boiling whatever kind of water is all around you. But it does go limp after that, releasing you from its grasp. Oh, good. That was that was a lot closer than expected. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do now? Uh, uh, Mart is kind of uh, cheering you on. Oh, good, you got it. And it's still Medric's turn. You're out of initiative Start at this point. Yeah. Uh, Silas is going to try and. Uh, Climb back up on this side. Okay. Watch out, it's slippery. It, yeah, it's either, well, it's slippery on both of those counts, so it would be double uh, movement for both of them as you climb back up. Sure. And Mard is making her way over towards you. Four. Six. Actually, Medrick, you couldn't move there because Annie is blocking the way. Okay. I can move past her. It's too narrow. This is a, this is a, a, a ledgeway literally only wide enough for a single person. And actually, Medrick is also having a slippery time of it, so you could try. You'd probably fall in the water, but you can certainly try. Okay, I thought you were like you said we were out of initiative, so I'm just moving wherever. <laughs> yeah, you're you're out of initiative. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, sorry. Thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Gross. He's, he starts cleaning off uh, himself. It's a little bit difficult because it's it soaked you right to the skin. Uh, Fine, that's what presentation's for. It, 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 it is. It's not... It's a little bit weird because you kind of have to, you know, shove your hand into your shirt to clean yourself off. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it really penetrates uh, at all. Um, it's mostly a surface thing. Uh, but Marta comes over to you. Are you all right? You went underneath that water, and it's not really the best place to go swimming. Oh, that's fine. I am feeling a little lightheaded from the blood loss, though. <laughs> she rummages around in her, uh, her sack and uh, pulls out a, a rather old-looking metal banged-up, uh, uh, um, basically a flask. Uh, here, this will this will uh, put some sand in your grit. She hands it to you to drink. He'll give it. He's not into alcohol, but he'll give it a try. Sure. Okay. Um, it does have a little bit of a bitter taste of the uh, sort of the under under uh, taste of rum, but otherwise there's a weird sort of strawberry taste from it. Um, it is a uh, shoot. I forget the level of that. It is a healing potion. Uh, do, 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 do. in sort of semi-alcoholic form. Let's got to look up uh, the level. D8 plus 2 or 2D8 plus 2? or It would be the 2D8 plus 2 version. Keen. Uh, oops. Oh, there it is. There you go. Uh, oh, thank you. Marta, um, uh, I will find some way to repay you for that. Uh, I feel much better. 
Sorry, it would be the um, 4d4 plus 4, technically, but oh, right. uh, for right. healing potions. Um, it works out to, well, add 4 to that, basically. Well, there you go. That works out, too. So 16 uh, in total. Yeah, instead of 13, so 3 more. Um, always good to have a little nip on hand, and she takes a, a little swig of it herself uh, as well. That can't have been cheap. Oh, let's just say that I know a guy who knows a guy who brews some things on the side. Well, Is thank you very much. Oh, you've met him then. Nice fellow. Yeah, he's a decent guy. A always little weird, to, but in a good always way. Always trying to sell me perfumes for some reason. I think he likes me. <laughs> uh, it's good to have a himself. <laughs> It's good to have a nip of something once in a while down here. You might fall in or have some other, well, nothing quite like that for a while. It's a lot more, uh, a lot more surprise than I expected. Uh, attacks by creatures happen often down here. Oh, I mean, occasionally something will stray its way all the way in here. Those things are usually too big to make it through the grates. That definitely means that something's been broken. Well, it should be fixed as quickly as possible. No, no, we'll have to search it out. But you're right. You're right. I'll make sure that someone gets on it soon. Maybe even me. Or if your back is feeling good, Sonny, you might be able to join me. I could always use a strong arm like yours. Possibly if there's nothing else on the go, but not permanently. Uh, we should probably get going. Yes. Uh, we've only got, I mean, well, we've probably got five or six hours, but you don't want to waste too much time. Yeah, a little bit of time has passed, but not a huge amount so far. Um, the corpses are kind of floating slowly down down towards the, basically toward the, the uh, in-out valve in the bay. Um, so they disappear a little bit quickly after they die. Seeing that that bridge was out, uh, Marta leads you over now towards uh, kind of where you had uh, fought off the uh, Crabtibus before. And Sorry about the torch mark on that. Uh, and she kind of <laughs> she kind of unnerves you a little bit when she kind of jams the nine foot pole through the empty spaces in the in the bridge itself, and then starts to kind of hop up gently on on. Uh, using the pole as sort of a leverage to hop a little bit. The the bridge creaks a little bit, but I think it'll hold, but I'll put in a note about it. And lead you now up uh, around. Yeah. You think it'll hold. Does it creak more when I walk on it? <laughs> a little disconcerting, yeah. Uh, after a moment, too, like you've had a chance to step around and kind of scrape off some of the... the the goo, the sort of scum on the top surface of the water, which is really where most of the, the uh, slipperiness came from. So you're, you're able to kind of keep moving along uh, a little more uh, uh, easily now and not have to worry about sliding all the time. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, clear out a path that she would have taken you on. I'm not going to do this uh, room by room, essentially, but um, just to show you what you would see uh, along the way. Um, all right. That's not what I wanted to show anyway. Shoot, where am I going? Yes, there we go. Uh, I'll stop it once you get to that point. So um, she will lead you along um, to, oops, buttons, too many buttons. Uh, kind of following along the same path. And then moving along so you can kind of follow where the icon is going to follow along with the path. Again, sorry about the awkwardness here. Still, used to, still not used to these tools. Uh, can everybody see where she is on the map? Yep. Yeah, I just zoomed out. Okay. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm revealing some areas along the way that you would have seen. You, for the most part, can't really see too far in this place. 
Um, there's no, other than where there are actual torches, there aren't, isn't any inherent light. Not a problem really for, uh, for Silas, but for the other two, there's really not much you can uh, make out. I'll pick up like, a piece of garbage that doesn't seem like like it smells too bad and cast a light cantrip. There you go. That works as well. Yeah, I, I thought Silas had a light on his staff. Yeah, my staff's lit up and Medrick can see in the dark anyway. Does the staff have the light cantrip? I can't remember what that does. Or just emits light? Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's so, uh, just light cantrip, but only on itself. Okay. Whoops. She wouldn't move there. She would move across the bridge. Um, I'm not trying to leave anybody in the dust here, just trying to <laughs> demonstrate the path she would take. And I'm watching along on the on that as well. Um, whoops, there's a gap there. Jeez, Silas, you stink. Wait, no, that's me. Damn it. Actually, as, as we're going along, Silas is prestidigitating crap off of him. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Once it's mostly off of, of uh, Silas, he'll start doing that to Medrick too. There we go. I was like, there should be a path here. Why is there not a path here? Oh, the bridge is back there. I need that. Uh, and I need to reveal that. And you kind of get the sense that uh, as you're moving through here, she's she's fairly confident in her step, but it would have been easy to uh, to those walls aren't really supposed to be there. Uh, it would have been easy to get lost, uh, and because in part because the bridges themselves um, aren't uh, aren't always where you expect them to be, and she even mentions that the bridges sometimes move uh, not on their own; they just start floating away. I'm trying to reveal something that's not working. There we go. Uh, Silas suddenly remembers something and prestidigitates clean uh, like a square foot of wall and then chalks it, uh, marks, uh, chalks a, a mark on it. <laughs> it's like, I wish I'd been doing this since the start. Make a survival roll. Uh, why he has chalk. Uh, his survival is so bad, though. Okay. 12. You managed to put a rough circle uh, on on one part of the ro the the, the uh, area. What? Uh, where is it? We'll just draw it on the map here. We'll actually have one on there. Uh, uh, just be wherever he is now. Uh, just at some point. Just periodically, he would uh, he would clean a section of wall, and then chalk an arrow pointing in the direction that we were going. Okay. Your survival roll is high enough to know that uh, while you did clean a spot of the wall and put the chalk on. This place floods frequently, and oh, yeah. all kinds of caustic chemicals float in the air. You're not really sure if the chalk is going to stay there all that long. Oh, no. It's not going to stay at all once it actually starts to flood again. But uh, yeah. before then, it'll be there. So just to yeah, illustrate... We want, to, we want to be out before it floods, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Um, so just to illustrate... I'm trying to remember how to do this properly. Uh Nope, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted either. <sighs> okay, I will just move it, and you can see the icon moving as she leads you a path um, mm -hmm. over, just so that it's apparent to uh, to you as well as to everybody at home. Um, and she's kind of periodically testing the the depth of the water. Uh, pushing through that, something that seems to have been dislodged. There is a number of um, small pieces of timber um, that might have been from, I don't know, the, she speculates they might have been from the, the uh, docks themselves or maybe a ship that broke up outside, uh, off sea or some cargo that got, got waylaid. It's hard really to say what it is at this point without digging it out. But she, it's, you get the impression that this is in some ways just her regular job of having to go through and poke all of these different things. Um, and as she's moving along, kind of leading you, uh, and in, as she mentioned, she's leading you towards the uh, the well, which is the, the destination she has in mind to show you. Uh, whether that's where you want to go or not, she's not quite sure. Um, mm -hmm. Fine to me. Uh, when she gets to this point, um, she points down this long corridor. Um 
<coughs> but all the way at the end, you can kind of make out a, a, a larger room. I'm going to just... Uh, someday, all of these tools will be just so second nature to me that I won't even know that I've done anything. Um, points all the way down the uh, that that hollow hallway, and um, calls that place the filter. Um, when we can, we direct a lot of things to go in that particular direction. Gives us a single place to go f go uh, uh, pouring over what we've found. There's a bit of a downward slope in some of the spaces towards it, so on the way in, things tend to gather in that sort of direction. If we're close enough, like right now, we can kind of direct that stuff in there. It's usually where some of the really good stuff comes in. We can take a look at it later if you'd like. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we may have to. Uh... Seeing as how you don't know what you're looking for, I figured we'd take in all the highlights. Mm -hmm. Are we under the marketplace right now? She kind of tilts her head back a little bit and thinks. I th would say that the marketplace isn't far from here, yes. Because we're looking for that place. It's somewhere around there. No, the well isn't far from that, but... Uh, not sure if that's what you're looking for, because I don't really know what you're looking for. Well, do we? If objects gather inside the well, we can probably start looking there. And I just realized that I don't have a bridge where I thought I had a bridge. <laughs> you can't get there from here. <laughs> that was not my intention. So uh, I'm going to say that something that looks like a bridge is a bridge. Just for my own convenience sake, because that was what I meant to have there. Uh, the map was somewhat of a, let's not say last minute concoction, but uh, I didn't have as much time as I thought I would have um, with the map. So, um, Marta leads you once more kind of up and around a corner um, and then back away from where you had been going across a bridge. And then I'm going to call this another bridge. So, uh, it really was supposed to be a connection there. I just sort of forgot about it. Uh, so you can reach to the bridge over here. Now, so as the you bridge pass, is standing, kind of? what's that? The bridge is where I'm standing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a wall there that meant that was supposed to be a bridge. Um, I will say that as you passed by the um, uh, before you got to the corridor, just before you got the corridor to the filter. She did cross the bridge from there. You did see another one of those lights and another door that was uh, leading to another small room. And as you cross, I would ask what's in that door. Pardon? I would ask what that door is for. Storage. Uh, I think that one, and she kind of pauses for a moment. Uh, mostly pitch and cement making things in there to repair some of the walls. Can we take a quick look in there? if you like so we'll back up a little bit um, as she oh. has uh, led people to that room and we'll just reveal that room um, the doorway in this one is solid it does not have a grill on the bottom of it uh, instead it's a solid door that actually has a bit of leather around the edges of the door to seal it uh, and as she kind of and she manipulates the the lock that's built into the door uh, actually it would have been a covering, a, a piece of of, of uh, tightly packed um, wood to kind of cover over where the the, the hole was, uh, and then for you, Annie, you kind of recognize the key goes in less than the depth of the door, mm -hmm. almost as though the lock is only going part way through. Uh, and again, there's that sort of more than one turn twitch to it, um, but the door unlocks and she opens it up. Um, as you can see, and there's several barrels inside, um, and there's a bit of a of a, of a uh, caustic smell in the air. Um, that one over there, I believe, is pitch. There's probably some oil in that one for oiling any of the hinges that are necessary. Um, that one back there is probably uh, uh, 
would be pure water. We use it to mix, and there's a one of the barrels which is empty and has kind of a grayish residue inside, mixing some cement there to patch some of the holes when we can. That has to be a very quick process, I'll tell you, because you have to wait for the water to go down, but you can't wait for it to come back up too long. It has to dry before it's uh, going to go through. Interesting. That sounds like a lot of anxiety. Oh, it keeps me on my toes. Uh, Silas is keeping uh, a good look on where the where she's producing the keys from and how she's unlocking the doors. Okay. Um, the keys seem to come from within her robe. Again, a small thin chain kind of attaching them uh, inside. Uh, you've noticed that she's jingled a little bit, and there probably is more than two keys. Um, but the keys don't really look that much different from the brief view that you have. Yeah. Um, I'll just clear out that space in that one as you're passing through. What's behind door number two? Referring to that one. Yep. Uh, let me take a look. Well, if you want to do the full tour, I suppose I can open up these as I pass on through. It'll take a lot longer, but... And she opens up that one. And similar to the other one, it has a, a couple of barrels full uh, of pitch. On the back wall is a uh, cabinet, um, which contains uh, numerous metal tools um, used for spreading and stirring the pitch. And for, um, uh, there's even a, a small, it uh, looks like a lantern, but it's got a wider base to it. Uh, and she explains it's, 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 uh, it's used to heat up the pitch to get it to move a little bit. You have to be careful not to light the pitch on fire, though. That would be terrible. Yeah, smokes like everything. Um, yeah, Silas will take a look, quick look through to see if there's anything that's not a mechanical tool in there. But uh, make an investigation roll. It looks like it's mostly do tools and and uh, uh, a few broken tools. There's a couple of of shovels in there, long handled shovels, uh, about a seven foot long shovel on it or handle on it. Probably for moving yep. things along. Doesn't see anything, then he'll keep moving. Okay. Um. Could I possibly try to, like, I, I want to close the door, have the door locked, and try to pick it to see how likely someone who does not have the key would be to manage to get in this. Uh, you want to lag behind a little bit and do that, or do you want to do it openly? I want to do it openly just to test it to know if we need to open put put a priority on opening everyone before we get to the well or not okay um with the other with the other door uh, she had not only, she not only closed it but she held it tight and let it lit lock um, presumably to let all of the leather also settle into place so that it wouldn't be so it's watertight Mm -hmm. um, similarly with this one, when she closes it and, and, uh, and pulls it close, again, it has that sort of leather filler around the edge. Um, she leans back a little bit uh, on the handle to, to, uh, to uh, twitch the, uh, the lock in place. Um, as she's walking away, um, do you announce this or just do it? I do ask if, if she'd mind if I, I try. Um, well, I, I, I'm, it's an odd request, I suppose. Uh, why would you want to unlock these doors without the key? I want to see if somebody else could have. That uh, way, we don't need to check every single one on our way over. We can check them on our way back. And if something is in there, it's from somebody who has the key. I see. Yeah, that's logical. Hmm? I don't know what you're expecting to find, but I suppose you can go ahead and try. Make an insight no. check. Not for one. Okay. She seems to be amused by your request, but otherwise just sort of twiddling her thumbs and waiting for you. Did we lose Silas? Nope. Oh, there you are. I just haven't been moved. That's fair. Ooh, I will make a thieves tool roll. Okay. 22. You find that there's something very odd about the way this lock works. 
And as you insert the tools and you're pretty sure you've gotten it, it's not unlocked. It seems to require something a little bit more than what you were expecting. A complicated lock, to be sure. Not the kind of thing you expected, and certainly nowhere near the same level of lock uh, as you saw up above on the outer doors. That was a simple lock by comparison. Cool. This is information. Unless it's someone who has the keys, then I don't think we need to check every single room on our way there. We can we can mm. check them out on our way back if we don't find what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. There was some concern about smugglers when we first put these in. And so my grand aunt had those doors kind of made a little bit special. Nice, solid dwarven locks. Um, once more, she leads you on. This time kind of around the corner, up and over across this bridge, back down, and all the way over. Reveal some more of the space. Uh. She's taking us to the toilet. So, as she leads you around, um, As she comes around this corner, um, you can hear, as you're getting closer, the sound of sort of gurgling, bubbling water. Uh, and it becomes to be quite quite strong, quite loud. Um, for um, each of you, it sort of sounds a little bit like a waterfall. And that's sort of what you're expecting to find until you come around the corner. And she waves her hands proudly and says, Behold the well! In this uh, broad expanse, the greenish, brackish water seems to float into and become kind of pushed back a little bit by a lighter colored, purer colored, uh, purer looking water uh, in this large square space. The water seems to be burbling up out of, uh, from down below uh, into this space as well, rather than going and flowing in the other direction. As you can kind of see that in through the clearer water, you can just make out what looks like a downward, uh, um, a downward funnel shape uh, that seems to be capped off in the middle. Stranger, though, around the corners of this room are large uh, statues, each uh, of a humanoid person uh, wearing some sort of cloak and clasping their hands together in sort of a, a hand-hooked-together sort of fashion. Off to the left... Steps descend into this uh, pool of water, now mostly submerged uh, in the brackish green. Um, and a couple of, of lights are seen on the left-hand wall around where the stairs are. One of the weirdest things that I've ever seen. Uh, legend has it was here when they went to go and dig everything else out. That in the center is fresh water. It's the strangest thing, all coming up out of the water. Nothing ever goes down, so far as I know. Now, some of the stories have uh, have it that they put that um, that drain in the middle to prevent anything from coming in. I don't know how it was coming in or why, but that's what they told me. That's what the stories say. So Apparently, clean water is coming out of the ground? And the green water is not going in? That's why they call it the well. It is a, a spring of pure water. Don't know why. But it's not pure anymore because now it's in the sewers. What's with the hooded guys? No, no idea. They're, they were older than I am. That's considerable. They've always been there so far as I know. I don't think they were part of the original plans, but when they discovered this, they, they set this up this way. Nobody much comes down here anymore. As you can imagine, it's not really the most pleasant journey for most people. But I think they must have back in the day. Who knows? Maybe the algae wasn't strong back then. Maybe it was something else. Can I take a closer look at the statues? Yeah, Silas is going to... Uh, Silas is going to head down the stairs. 
Well, Annie does that. Okay. And Marta kind of moves out of the way. The stairs are broad and strong and firm. They don't look like they've been weathered at all by the water. And they lead directly down into the pool. As you step down towards the, the, the water, uh, you notice that the floor has just a little bit of an extra tilt downward. Again, kind of that funnel shape. Annie, you take a closer look at those uh, statues. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check for me. What about Medric? I'll look at the statues, too. Okay. You can make an investigation. Uh, investigation or history, actually. Is, is uh, Medric, uh, sorry, is Silas going directly into the center? Yeah, he's going to check out the water and the grate or whatever it is. Okay. Is that investigation or history, uh, Nax? That's history, and that's bad. <laughs> it's not great. Okay. Um, and 16 for your investigation, uh, yeah. Annie? Okay. All right. Nice. So, um, Medrick, you're looking at them, and there's nothing remarkable about these statues. You kind of take a look at this one, and you look at the other one, and it's like, there's, there's nothing they're just kind of really dull statues. Um, there's no particular features or details. They um, look cool. I guess somebody went through a lot of work to bring them down here, which is good on them, I guess. <laughs> uh, Annie, as you look closer, much like Medric, there's nothing particularly distinctive about the statues themselves. But then you kind of look around the room and realize that they're all looking directly at the center of the well. Um, they're all paying attention to that. And it gives you that sort of feeling of them being set up to ceremonially watch over the well or watch for something in the well. Silas, you wade a little bit deeper in. And sure enough, as you kind of come to a certain threshold, you can you feel as you move through the difference in the quality of the water. The, the water coming up out of this well has enough force and enough power that it's keeping the rest of it at bay. And in fact, pure, clear water. Um, you dip your, your hand in, bring it close to your nose. There's nothing to smell of it at all. Uh, take a, a taste of it. it. It tastes like pure water. In fact, it tastes very, very pure. It's not salt water at all. It's not... Uh, uh, you going to say? Uh, Silas may smell that from that. He is not tasting the water. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, but yeah, well, it may feel very pure. He will sit down and wash himself there while he's looking okay. around. Um, the, in the, the, the cone gets very deep as you go in. Um, so at the outside, the, the level of the green water is about, uh, four and a half feet or so, five feet. Um, as you move in, the slope gets deeper and deeper to where your character is right now. It is nearly, uh, 15 feet deep. So you can, you're under the water and you kind of taste it anyway, if you're breathing underwater. Um, but it seems pure, and in fact, you feel uh, somewhat recharged by it. Um, let me just roll this here. Mm -mm -mm. You regain four hit points. Yay! Um, as you feel refreshed by this pure, pure spring of fresh water, and that part is noticeable. Um, you, hmm. you can kind of feel a little bit of outward surge in the water as well. It's colder than the other water surrounding it too, which seems strange to you. But I don't see anything that might fit something that was placed here. This looks like it was just an ancient thing. Um, the, the, it's hard to say ancient necessarily. You take a closer look at that grate and the grate has the same sort of design as most of the place down here, um, it definitely looks like it's about as old as the the uh, the sewers themselves. Um, it looks very, very strong and reinforced. Um, it, it would actually weigh like half a ton probably trying to pull that thing out of there, um, which is far more over-engineered for something that would normally be a water grate. Yeah, but I don't see anything that might have been placed here two weeks ago to start up the storm. No, nothing seems to be that new here. Hmm. Well, I do finish cleaning myself off. Uh, and then I come out back to the crappy water, but less <laughs> of it than I had before. It does kind of make uh, the cleaning a little bit less of a, of a benefit. 
Yeah, well, I move through the dirty water as fast as I can, so it doesn't get quite as thick in before uh, as it was before. Uh, and I'll tell them, it's like, uh, that's really interesting. There's fresh water coming up from there, but um, there's I don't see anything there that could be what we're looking for. What about the statues? Oh, I don't think they do anything besides look cool. They seem to be walking over it. Hmm. Do they look at all like the statues from the temple where Catron was, the ones that we interacted with with the riddles and stuff? Hmm. Um, those statues were very small for the most part, where these ones are life size or a little bit taller. Um, you could, if you were to squint a little bit, say that they have a similar design, but these are very, very simple. They don't have a lot of features on them. Um, okay. the, uh, the only other statues that you've dealt with uh, in the other temple, the other temple that was underground that sunk into the ground after you left, those ones are much more detailed. They look like specific people. Where these ones are, in fact, the way that the hood is done over the face, uh, are almost uh, identical and and made not to have much for features. Well, we oh. should. Sorry. Okay. So they're all looking at the center of this well. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder what happens if we cover their eyes. And I'll put like my hand in front of the one of the, in, in front of one of them's eyes. I mean, the, again, the hood is kind of covering over most of their face. So there's no real detail for eyes, but you can you can reach up and put your hand in front of the uh, the statues uh, where the eyes would be. Nothing seems to happen. Always been um, a bit of a puzzler myself. This one has been a, a nice place to go from time to time. It looks pretty. Smells a little bit less than everything else. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it is interesting, but I don't think the thing we're looking for is here. Ah, that's a shame. I thought for sure this might have something to do with it. I'll look at one of the other statues. Maybe there is there anything different about it? Like if I look closer? You can make another investigation check. Take a close look at it. And I'll tell Annie and Silas, like, hey, do you mind looking at the other two? See if there's anything different. Oh, that's a 10 again. Marta kind of oh. just sort of plops down, uh, contemplating the, the, the water inside. Looks like a moment of peace for her and a very, probably very busy day for the most part. I would like to, before I, I cross over to check the other two, can I take a look at this wall? Uh, are, are these torches just for the stairs or is there like a hidden door or something um okay um how would you like to look at the wall <laughs> I, I would like to like run my hand over it okay uh, make See an investigation it. check then it, that is a natural 20. Woot, nice um as the other two are are looking to examine the statues and and you're kind of looking at the wall. Um, you run your hands over the surface of the wall. It's a little bit slick. That same sort of ambient, humid kind of uh, stuff uh, seems to uh, to uh, adhere to this wall as well. But your fingers kind of probe in, and you can see where some of the the uh, the mortar that was used to to hold these stones together seems to be, uh, you know, a little bit looser. And you're kind of probing around, and then your fingers run over just a couple of ridges, a little bit out of sight, kind of around the backside or the side of one of these these stones. And it feels kind of strange because it doesn't feel quite as natural. And as you kind of start peering in, you can't really see in, but you start to run your fingers around the stone. And what strikes you as familiar is while you can't see it, that same pattern was the same sort of thing you saw in the sunken temple's doors, in that complicated motif that it had running across all of its doors, which had to be kind of manipulated by hand and shifted and pressed in the right spaces to open up. You're getting that sense that 
this is not too far from that and similar in design. Can I try to open it with my experience with those doors? You can certainly try. That'll be sleight of hand. Sleight of hand specifically? Um, yes, I think so. Because it's not about the tools you have, it's about being able to kind of balance things. Oh. Oof. Oh. Unfortunately, while you found uh, the similarities there, it seems as though whatever combination of things you have to do is different here. Um, it doesn't become very apparent to you how how this can be manipulated. You're fairly convinced, though, that it is some sort of portal, it is some sort of opening. Hey, Silas, can you get your cleaning over here? Uh, sure. You found something? Yeah. I think I found a door. Silas looks over at Marta. Get it open. Uh, when she says that, Silas looks over at Marta to see her reaction. Make an inside check. If she had nope. a reaction, you missed it. She is looking over, though. Well, Silas will... Uh... Use prestidigitation to clean the area and then try to assist Danny in opening it. Okay. You notice as you sort of clean off the area now, um, and you kind of imagine that this has not been cleaned in centuries, maybe. Um, it reveals little bits of, of shining stone within the surface of this. And for you, Annie, it starts to... Uh, resemble broken up and placed in a weird three-dimensional way that you can only see at certain angles the similar wave like triple wave like pattern you had seen before in that other door that confirms your thought that this is very very similar uh, and you can try to make another sleight of hand roll this time with advantage um, oh Jesus <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing you try to do is exactly the same thing you tried to do last time. And that didn't seem to work either time. Uh, then you start to to uh, to move your hands around and you find a couple of stones that move a little bit. Uh, and you get, uh, and, and uh, uh, Silas, with your assistance, you kind of get in there. Can't quite see it, but you're still able to kind of curve the finger around and, and sort of clean in behind. Uh, as uh, little bits and, and pieces of, of dirt and crystal kind of fall away. But you get the impression that this door is meant to be meant to be locked. Every door has a key. So maybe with a key you could get in. You have a fairly good idea that there's certain places keys could go. Nothing obvious like a keyhole. And you, to, judging by it, the key's shape would be kind of weird too. But barring that or maybe massive amounts of explosions, this is probably not going to open up. Is it a push or a pull? I'll ask Silas and Annie. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Could Silas just try and get the door open. <laughs> Did Silas try an arcana roll to try to figure out the uh, the lock? Now that Annie's been working at it for a while, she can point out what she's seen, and you can make an arcana roll to kind of understand that. Well, there's a thing right hey, yo. here. Hey. Natural 20, 26 total. Nice. So as you're looking it over, and you know, you know locks a little bit, you know magic a little bit, and as she's pointing out all these things and the different experiences you had with the other door, and she explains, you know, I'm assuming anyway, that that uh, Annie is explaining like, well, this is what I did with the last door, and this is what I had to do there, and this is how I interpret this. You can see that she understands the doors, but not necessarily the magic behind it. And this door is not only sealed in a physical way, 
but there is it looks like certain places where crystals are lined up where something is going to go through the between those crystals uh, and and he points out well probably the key uh, which would essentially connect those crystals together somehow there would be a magical surge that would happen to actually unlock this door which means that it's an even m bigger fancier door than either one of you had suspected hmm. well, do I think it's got to be a particular shape of crystal or just crystal connecting those with some magic or something because part of my staff is crystal uh, Annie would probably tell you you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth Annie but I think that this is within your expertise um, that locks have keys that are made for a specific shape to be in them. However, locks can be picked. So the answer is kind of a maybe. Um, you find the right thing to pick the lock with, you could possibly open it. The key that's built to specifically go in there would have a particular shape and a particular purpose. Whether you could replicate that with any crystal, you're not sure. Can we try to, as a team, pick this lock? Him bring the magical element understanding and me understanding doors? In this case, it would be uh, Silas making an arcana check and you making the sleight of hand roll. Or rather, or you assisting him with that, essentially. Yeah. Because at this point, now that we're trying to brute force and use a tool for it, we're, we're actively trying to pick it. Yeah, well, and, yeah. And you were trying to substitute one thing for the key, essentially. So, yeah. yep. so that'll be an arcana roll with advantage as you try to use the crystal in your, in your staff to pick this. 24. You wedge the, uh, the, the, the crystal in. It's a little bit awkward to try to get the crystal from the staff to fit in there exactly properly. It seems to fit and does not react. It may need to be a specific crystal. Hmm. Okay, I don't think we're getting through here now, but we've got to find a cr the crystal that fits there. I mean, if it's even in here. Um, what are you hmm. looking at? Causing the storm What's, is behind that door. What's so interesting about that wall? Says uh, Marta. There's a door here. There is. Yeah. Do you have a key for it by any chance? And you see her reach in behind her robe and pull out eight keys. They're all metal. They're all of different sizes. Oh, no, Siri, I don't want to know anything. Stop that. Siri can't solve your problems either. <laughs> um, I, I can certainly try. Where's the keyhole? And she kind of pokes around looking at it. Well, I need a piece of crystal. All well, these so are made out of... All oh, these are made out of wrought iron. I don't think I have a key to this. I didn't even know it was a door. Funny. Hmm. I've seen doors like this before. So I've seen doors that look like door. doors that look like walls. Yes, they're quite useful. Well, I suppose. I've been down here for, well, since I was a little child. I didn't even know there was a door there. I feel right stupid now. <laughs> well, it's not really obvious. I didn't know there was a door either until they pointed it out. Oh, you don't have to make me feel better. I'm okay with not knowing a few things at my age. Still, I was trying to make me feel better. <laughs> still, the number of times I sat in front of that wall and stared at that, uh, that water hole, stared at the well... Huh. Think I'd get a clue. Well, I doubt this is where the thing we're looking for is being held. This looks like it's from a long time ago, not something that was recently used. That is fair. But what if this is one of those things that we're supposed to secure? Yeah. What I think we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to find the key first. Um, well, we can't stand around here all day. The 
Tide will be coming in sooner than you might think. Time is a little bit funny down here, I know, but... Well, she's got a point. Uh, Mark, yeah. Is there yeah. another spot that would fit for below the marketplace? Well, there's a... I mean, I suppose there's the, the filter itself, or I can move over further from that. Well, I guess let's go check the filter next, then. Yeah. Off to the filter. That and that's where I'm going to call it for tonight, uh, just because of time, more than anything else. It's not a dramatic pause. There's no no sudden thing. It was interesting to see whether you would actually get into this room. I'm kind of I'm kind of pleased you noticed it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but uh, uh, such is the the fate of of complicated locks as well. Uh, so uh, it's going to go back here. We will return back um, to the adventures of uh, the Legends of the Drowned Isles in two weeks. Uh, I'm going to take a little brief time to to in, to uh, do a bunch of other things. To be honest, probably sleep. I think I'll sleep probably quite a bit uh, as the holidays are upon us. Um, this has been on Twitch as a live stream. I didn't actually check to see if anybody was there. Welcome to the chat room if you are. Uh, on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1, we run on Sundays, typically around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Atlantic uh, Daylight Time? Atlantic <coughs> Time. Let's just say Atlantic Time, whenever that happens to be. You can also find it on YouTube at youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legend of the Drowned Owls playlist or the Campaign 2, The Great Confusion playlist. Uh... Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I for all your discussions. I want to thank my players for joining me today. Uh, have a great, happy holidays. Get some get some rest, enjoyment. Maybe roll some dice. I don't know exactly what it's going to be like. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, have a great uh, new year. And in the new year, you know, maybe they'll open up that door. Who knows? Thanks for playing, guys. Thanks for running. Yeah.